All right, welcome everyone. My name is Kurt. I am a comic book colorist. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I will be time lapsing through this piece that was drawn by Rebecca Isaacs for Shadow Service number five. It is a book I'm working on, uh, doing some covers on anyway for Vault. And I know you guys don't care to watch me flat very much, so I've really sped this up more than the rest of it. It won't be this fast when I start rendering, but um, this is actually 20 times speed, and I'm just using a lasso and the fill tool, which is my usual preferred method of flatting. I always get asked, especially when I'm working with clip on, on streams like I was on this one, I'm always asked if I'm aware of clips flatting tool you know help options there, there's lots of little things to help with flatting i am aware of them I, i've got lessons on them in the new uh, clip studio course but i'm not a big fan of it um and i even mentioned this in the course there's there's a lot of things that are to me a little bit slower uh, that you end up doing just as much correcting and fixing and adjusting you know, and the time that that it takes to do all of that to me doesn't seem to make uh, enough sense to to use those tools. So I'm uh, just using the good old fashioned lasso and bucket tool to fill this in here. And um, as far as a color scheme, a lot of these colors you're seeing now are just kind of temporary that I threw in there while I was flatting. But where this one's kind of kind of end up is this guy, this this character that we're looking at has like sky blue skin, like this very kind of blue skin. And so I wanted to kind of build the entire color scheme around that. And so you can see it shifting to blue now. But uh, what you'll notice is to play off of that blue, I shifted everything else to be warm. Okay, the, the cloak, the, the pauldrons, his wings are all a little warmer than the blue of his skin and that helps his blue you know of course come out more um, through rendering with it now I'm starting to do some rendering I started with the background I wanted to get that in first and see if it was uh, gonna work with what I had planned and I went with this kind of orange and red which eventually leans a little bit toward purple toward the end um, but that red and that blue you know I was expecting to, to kind of play off each other uh, the brush that I'm using here, which someone will ask about in the comments, is uh, it's called the the Chunky Chucky, the wet version, uh, or is it Chalky Chucky? Anyway, uh, it's right there on the, you can see in, in the uh, sub tool settings, the name of it. It's a part of uh, a big group of brushes from a guy named Frenden, F-R-E-N-D-E-N. -E you can see his name there too in the sub tool section. A uh, whole bunch of brushes for not very much money. And this is one of the first ones that I tried. I really liked it. It's got a nice canvas texture over it. It's got good pressure sensitivity. And so I ended up using that or the airbrush for pretty much everything on this entire image. And um, you can see here, I'm starting to put some, some uh, light on his cloak. And on the stream, I remember we, we talked quite a bit about um, textures on this and I don't mean like textures like texture overlays but just the surface textures of objects you know his cloak is I'm assuming some kind of cloth it's very flat okay the texture is kind of rough and so you don't get these really insane lights or really insane darks they're all kind of in a very narrow range of light to dark and the smoother an object is I would say on the opposite end of the spectrum would be his uh, pauldrons or, or his uh, shoulder pad kind of things that you see me coloring here. Metal that's really reflective, really smooth like this, is going to have a wider range of value from the lightest part to the darkest part within that object, you know. And so you'll see here the highlights get really bright, the shadows get pretty dark, because reflected metal or chrome or kind of anything like that is going to reflect the lights and it's going to reflect the shadows and so you, you end up with a really wide range of, of light to dark and, and you can see that on on those pauldrons and I'll kind of do the same thing on the weapons and his skin is kind of in the middle of those two textures between the the cloth of the robe and the the harshness and then the, the sharpness and reflectivity of some of this metal 
Um, skin's kind of halfway between both, I would say, you know. Um, and in here, I'm just going in. I'm still, all this rendering is on one hard light layer. You can see that over there on the right. Um, I do have an overlay layer above it that you saw me add that kind of orangey warmth to the shoulder pads. That's what I use that overlay layer for. It tends to affect the midtones without affecting the highlights and the shadows very much, which is exactly what I wanted. So I tend to use overlay to kind of shift colors around like that. And uh, I'm also working on these jewels. They're going to be really orange. And, and to, to show that light is coming into these jewels and then bouncing around and coming out, um, you'll notice that uh, I, I turn them into a deep orange and then add really bright highlights with some deeper red uh, shadows along the, the bottom side. After looking at some reference, that seemed to be how those things worked when the light passed through them. So um, that is something I, I, I looked at some reference for. And I'll start doing the swords here. Uh, really not doing anything too fancy here. Just lightening, uh, lightening the, the ends and one half of each side so that it kind of looks like the, the blade has that kind of a bevel. I don't know what that's called. I'm, I'm not a not a sword guy but or a knife guy but uh but lighting one side of it to make it look like it's got some uh, the angle changing there on top and then these uh well, these this axe and, and the other sword that he's using i use slightly different colors a little bit darker you know i i did want you know those front blades that he's holding to kind of come forward with the ones with the blood on it and so i'm using slightly different colors on the weapons behind that. There were several layers of this going on um, of, of different planes of swords overlapping with weapons, overlapping with arms, overlapping with wings, and so flatting this one took <laughs> took a while to separate all that stuff out. And putting those little bright specular highlights on the metal to make it look more reflective and adding some detail to the handles here. These look a little flat to me right now. I, I think I come in at the very end and uh, make those look a little bit more round. And, uh, and then I'm about ready to start. Yeah, starting on his on his skin here, and I'm just using a soft airbrush to kind of roughly put in where I want the the light to be. It's and then I'm going to come in over that with some more highlights. But I really just kind of wanted to get rid of all the the flat surfaces and make sure that there was at least uh, a gradient or, or some kind of shift on, on all the different services. And, and that kind of helps sell the fact that, you know, this is a three-dimensional object. And, and then I'm switching to that brush I was telling you about. And you can kind of see, I've zoomed up a little bit here, you can see that texture that's uh, happening. And uh, I did pull up a picture of a skull for this just to make sure that I was comfortable enough with it. Uh, it it's been a long time since... Uh, nursing school. So um, I had to refresh myself on some of the planes on a skull. And uh, so I'm kind of doing one pass with this blue color on all the skin first, or, or I guess this is skin that, that he's covered in. And, uh, and then after all that's done, I'll actually come in with a brighter blue to do some more, you know, specular highlights and and um, they'll be few and far between. It doesn't take much, but um, just kind of slowly building up the values on him. And and I end up having a wider range of value on him, too. Uh, I go with some deeper shadows on him in a little bit. But right now, I'm still just adding in that first kind of lighting highlight pass here. And now I'm switched to that brighter color. Test it out. A, a, a few different ways there, but uh, going to just a brighter color, close to white, and just really hitting the the very uh, you know tip top edges of all the places that I think might capture some of that light, and especially on his head, you know, right in the center, trying to increase the contrast there as much as possible to have the lightest light, you know, and the darkest dark next to each other if possible, which seems to be the way to to pull attention. Uh, to pull the viewer's eye into a piece is to make sure that your lightest light and darkest dark are close to each other, you know, near your emphasis or near your target, um, you know, your focus, basically. 
Uh, here I'm darkening the base color beneath the rendering and then going back to the rendering layer and uh, adding even some more shadows. This would basically be like, if this was a game engine, this is like the ambient occlusion, if you're familiar with that term. Just uh, all the little nooks and crannies where light is not really going to be uh, captured very much or seen. And so, um, and that also adds another dimension to him and pulls him forward in a way that, uh, you know, that shadow is not really present on much else. So having that be uniquely on his skin sort of, um, again, creates a, a strong focus on, uh, on his skin here. Still adding a few more shadows, and I'll also add a little bit of reflected light under his cheekbones as if the orange light is reflecting off of his, uh, yeah, there it goes. The orange light from his pauldrons is actually reflecting onto his face. Or, or what, or yeah, I guess that's his face. Also adding a little bit of that reflected orange light into the shadows that I just, uh, just added. It's very subtle, but you can see it there. And then what else? So we're changing the color of the wings. There was a little too much contrast between the lines and the color. So I picked a color that is a little bit darker than the darkest base color on the wings and, and made it that color. Uh, and it was around this point that I realized that his pauldrons being so orange and being the only thing that color on the page kind of drew too much focus and so I kind of spread that orange around you can see that warmth now in the wings the bright yellow on the edges of the wings and it kind of tones down the uniqueness I guess factor of, of that orange in in those metal pieces because anytime you have something that is the only color that something is on a page then it will stand out more than anything else. Like on this thing here now, I would say that blue skin is unlike anything else anywhere else on this page. And so that blue skin really stands out and, you know, pops, to use, uh, to use that phrase. But uh, here I'm just kind of pushing some of these colors brighter and darker, uh, using that overlay layer, adding more of a tealish blue, which really made his skin stand out quite a bit adding that to the highlights just with a soft brush. It's, it's pretty roughed in there. We're coming into the end. I, I do a few more just little highlights and adjustments. And like I said, I think I'll change the background to more of a purple, which also makes the red on the blood on the swords be unique. And so that's something else that uh, I was thinking about as I was doing this. So, as always, thank you guys for watching, and uh, do check the links in the description if you want to support more videos like this, and, and click all the things that you need to click. Click the like button, click the subscribe button, consider joining, Patreon, comment, what else? Buy a course, or just watch, tell your friends, that works too. Thanks again, I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.